In section 2.4, we will revisit closed and compact sets in connection with sequences. The goal of this video is to introduce the concepts of limit points and isolated points of a set. Let's start with definition 2.4.1. Let capital A be a subset of the real numbers. A real number C is called a limit point of A if there is a sequence A sub n in A with A sub n not equal to C for every natural number n and such that the sequence A sub n converges to C. A point C in A which is not a limit point is called an isolated point. Let's look closely at these definitions. First, Note that a real number C is called a limit point of A if we can construct a sequence so that 1, all the terms of the sequence are in A, 2, none of the terms are equal to C, and 3, A sub n converges to C. Every point in A, which is not a limit point, is an isolated point. Observe here that limit points may lie outside of the set A, but isolated points must be in the set A. Let's look at some examples. For our first example, let A be the set 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 ninth, 1 eighth, 1 27th, and so on, such that the terms are alternating powers of 2 and 3. I claim that 0 is a limit point of A. Notice, 0 isn't an element of A, but that's okay because limit points need not belong to the set. To verify 0 is a limit point of A, we must find a sequence of points in A which converges to 0, but none of the points of our sequence can be 0. Do you see such a sequence? What about the sequence 1 3rd, 1 9th, 1 27th, and so on? Certainly, the sequence converges to 0, and 0 isn't a term of the sequence. Hence, we've shown 0 is a limit point of A. Note, we could have also chosen a different sequence from the elements of A. For example, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, etc. would have worked just as well. Is 1 half a limit point of A? Can we find a sequence of points in A none of them equaling one-half, converging to one-half. No. If we eliminate one-half, the remaining term closest to one-half is one-third. So no sequence converging to one-half exists from these remaining terms in A. Since one-half is in A but is not a limit point of A, then one-half must be an isolated point. What are the other isolated points of A? Well, similar to our above argument, a third, a fourth, one ninth, an eighth, one twenty seventh are all isolated points. We cannot find a sequence of points in A converging to any of these values. In fact, every point of A is an isolated point, and the only limit point of A is zero. For our second example, let A be the interval from 1 to 2, including 2. Is 2 a limit point of A? If we think so, we must find a sequence of points in A, excluding the number 2, which converges to 2. Our sequence will have to contain numbers between 1 and 2, but converging to 2. How about the sequence A sub n equals 2 minus 1 over n, starting with n equals 2? Let's be sure we're clear about the terms of this sequence. Since we're starting with n equals 2, the first term of our sequence is 2 minus a half. Then we have 2 minus a third, 2 minus a fourth, etc. Each term of our sequence lies in the set A, and our sequence converges to 2. Therefore, we have shown that yes, 2 is a limit point of A. What about 1? Can you think of a sequence of points in A converging to 1? Feel free to pause the video and see what you can think of. One option would be the sequence B sub n equal to 1 plus 1 over n, which contains numbers from the set A, 
none of which are 1, and converges to 1. So yes, 1 is a limit point of a. What about any number x and a? The tricky thing here is to make sure our sequence contains numbers between 1 and 2. When constructing a convergent sequence, using some version of 1 over n is always a good option. I encourage you to pause the video and play with x equals 5 fourths and x equals 7 fourths to see what you can come up with. One strategy is something like the following. If x is between 1 and 3 halves, try something like the sequence a sub n equals x plus 1 over n for n starting at a number large enough to ensure that your sequence contains values bigger than 1. Or give yourself some breathing room and use a sub n equals x plus 1 over n plus 1,000. If x is between 3 halves and 2, you can use a similar strategy with b sub n equal to x minus 1 over n or b sub n equals x minus 1 over n plus a million. Whatever you like, just being sure all of the terms of the sequence lie between 1 and 2 so that the points are within our set. Verify that this strategy works for x equals 5 fourths and x equals 7 fourths. Hopefully I've convinced you such a sequence can be constructed for any point x and a. Therefore, the limit points of a are the closed interval from 1 to 2. Since nothing remains in a, there are no isolated points. For a final example, let a be the set of natural numbers between 1 and 5. First, notice a is simply the set of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's start by asking if 3 is a limit point of a. Is there a sequence of points in A, none of which equals 3, but converging to 3? Notice the only numbers remaining in A are 1, 2, 4, and 5. Hence, no such sequence exists. Similarly, 1, 2, 4, and 5 cannot be limit points either. Therefore, A has no limit points. What then are the isolated points? The isolated points are all points in A which are not limit points. Hence, all the points in A are isolated points. Notice this will be true of any finite set. A finite set has no limit points. To gain better understanding of limit points and isolated points, we're going to state alternate definitions which appear in the text as exercise 2.4.1. First, let capital A be a subset of real numbers. A real number C is a limit point of A if every epsilon neighborhood of C contains a point little a in capital A which is not equal to C. A point C in A is an isolated point of A if there exists some positive number epsilon such that the epsilon neighborhood of C intersected with A contains only the point C. Notice, a point C is a limit point of A if every neighborhood of C contains a point of A that's not C itself. To be an isolated point, there must exist a single neighborhood of C with no other points of A. These definitions switch our focus from identifying limit points by creating convergent sequences to thinking in terms of epsilon neighborhoods. Intuitively speaking, the notion of a limit point is an extension of the notion of being close to a set in the sense that it tries to measure how crowded the set is. To be a limit point of a set, a point C must be surrounded by an infinite number of points of the set which get arbitrarily close to the point C in question. Let's revisit our earlier examples starting with example 3. Here, A contained the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's plot these on a number line. First, consider the element 3 in A. Note it is possible to find one epsilon neighborhood of 3 which contains no other point of A 
therefore 3 is isolated. Similarly, we see that it's possible to find one epsilon neighborhood around each of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, which contains no other point of A. Hence, these points are isolated. Our first example was the set 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 ninth, 1 eighth, 1 27th, etc. Let's plot these points on our number line. We see that every epsilon neighborhood of 0 will contain a point in A. Hence, 0 is a limit point of A. On the other hand, if we zoom in on any point in A, say one-third, it's possible to find one epsilon neighborhood of one-third containing no other point of A. Therefore, one-third is isolated. Similarly, every point in A is an isolated point. In our second example, A was the interval from 1 to 2, including 2. Notice that any neighborhood around 2 will contain a point in A other than 2. The same is also true of 1. Even though 1 isn't in the set, any neighborhood around 1 will contain a point of A. Therefore, 1 is a limit point. Finally, if we pick any point X in A, every neighborhood around X will contain a point in A other than X. So our limit points are the closed interval from 1 to 2. This ends our introduction to limit points and isolated points. I look forward to exploring these further with you in class. Thanks so much. See you then.